So years ago, when I first moved to Florida, I actually worked for a magic shop for at least a couple of years, um, which was, I mean, they had some ups and downs. There were some, uh, some cool things about it. I learned a bunch of things. There were some pretty terrible things about it. Um, but uh, it was certainly interesting. Uh, it was down in Old Town in Kissimmee, um, which is uh, another interesting part of town. So really, I, I was kind of in a pushy sales, like, carny trash job. I was carny trash for, you know, at least uh, two or three years. And you meet a bunch of really interesting people. Everything from um, the uh, gentleman trying to harass the haunted house workers that uh, ran off and dropped his gun, uh, to the um, uh, lovely young lady in the... Uh, um, short red dress that was going door to door asking if anybody needed her services uh, to uh, so many different people that you meet and so many different things that you hear and see. One night there was a gentleman that came into the shop and was noticing that there was a coin trick we do using some uh, old English pennies, some uh, the big old copper coins about the size of a half dollar. And uh, he asked what we used to polish them up and we had some, some Tarnax kicking around. We also had some Brasso that didn't do quite so well. Uh, so I told him that and he said, uh, you know, you can just uh, slice a lemon in half, dip it in salt, and that'll polish copper right up. Which doesn't really make any sense to me. and certainly didn't make any sense to me. Um, highly skeptical about that as I am about many things, but the nice thing about something as simple as that is that uh, it's very easy to test. You don't have to go online and research and see what you know other scientists or something like that have said. You can just try it. So that's what I did. I went home and I tried it on uh, some of copper coins just like these. As you can guess, I I'm going to uh, try it with you. I will let you kind of take the journey with me. This is, you know, years after I've actually had it. These are some of the same copper coins uh, that I use for the magic tricks. You can see I just dug them out. Some of them are more tarnished than others. But uh, they have at least a little bit of wear and tear on it. And uh, so yes, the idea, he says you take some uh, salt, which we have some salt. He said you cut a lemon, just like this one right here and it should miraculously polish copper super quick. Um, so, since it didn't seem to uh, make any sense to me, like I would have heard that before, so I tried each thing individually, because, uh, you know, almost kind of for science, it's just kind of what you do. So I would take some of uh, the salt, got kind of a wet paper towel here, get some of that kind of covered in the salt, and go to, uh, yeah, it's a, Really kind of rub that into half the coin. You can still see there's there's some salt on there, uh, and when I wipe the salt off, I've only I've tried to do only kind of half the coin here, so you can see maybe any sort of difference. Really, there's no difference. Absolutely nothing has changed here. All right, so uh, then I would take a lemon. Just cut the sucker in half. So, all right, what if I took uh, just the lemon? Rub that on half the coin, and again, there's no difference. Not really anything happens here. The idea, he said, quite literally, take the lemon. We'll do a quarter lemon here. It'll make it easier for dipping, you know, for all your lemon dipping needs. All right, so take that lemon dip it in the salt and then rub it on the coin. And that's pretty much exactly what happened when I tried it. That sucker polished up immediately, like Tarnax. Now, um, I'm always a little skeptical of all the labels on the bottles that say, you know, the state of California has made this, has labeled this as a carcinogen. Um, 
but uh, you know, there's plenty of all sorts of labels on the Tarnex bottle, and it just seems like terrible, noxious stuff. But uh, this is lemon and salt. But there it goes. And uh, yeah, I, I was super skept skeptical. He did not seem like a super credible dude. But there we go. There's a really cool, easy way to polish up your copper. So cool thing about how this all works is that the brown stuff, the stuff on the outside of the copper pennies, is actually copper oxide. Uh, that's what's actually being removed from the pennies. And it turns out that a weak acid, such as a lemon, you could probably also use uh, limes or something like that, mixed with salt actually uh, removes copper oxide. So there you have it. So it's a really simple scientific explanation the, that the gentleman at the time didn't know, and I certainly didn't know at the time, and now we've dropped a little science knowledge on you for it. So there's a fun, easy way to polish your copper. Now, uh, let me get a little bit of this cleaned up, and uh, we'll see you on the other side of this intro. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Rich Does a Thing. Now, this entire episode, aside from that little bit there, is going to be devoted to geeking out. And uh, it's... Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. That's new. Are, are we going to have these for uh, some of the other... Yeah, we are. We're going to have these for some of the other stuff, too. So uh, be prepared for uh, more of these. That's neat. Um, you know, this will be particularly useful for geeking out because... Uh, with certain things that we geek out about, if you don't want any spoilers, it would be nice for you to be able to fast forward through those parts. Now today you won't have to really worry about it because this is going to be the whole episode. But uh, yeah, if you ever need to fast forward through the episode without any of the spoilers, uh, all you do is you keep scrolling until you get past the little bar at the bottom and you're home free. Now, so for spoilers alert, today we will be talking about the, uh, the first series of Picard, which is found on CBS All Access. So, yeah, uh, you saw Jesse and I geeked out about the trailers for Picard before it got started. Now the whole thing is over, and we decided to put our thoughts together and talk about it. So, let's uh, let's start geeking out. So, welcome Jesse back to Rich Does a Thing Studios, here located in the heart of Rich Does a Thingville. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're here to talk about Picard and uh, that whole big series that's finally over. But... Uh, the last time that we had you here, we not only talked about uh, the Picard trailers, but we also ended up tasting a uh, a new kind of soda that was out there. And we've got some other new kinds of sodas to try. Want to try some? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So we got a couple different ones to try. There is, um, we found there's a new flavor of Fanta, which Very is excited. Pina Colada. Uh, which normally I wouldn't be uh, terribly excited because uh, I'm not as huge of a fan of Fanta, especially when it comes to like orange sodas and stuff like that. But um, it is pina colada flavored, and that's probably going to be cool. We also had them as slushies. Like Fanta has like a oh. own, their own. Uh. Yeah, which I had forgotten about. Um, and yeah, they, they were really good as slushies at uh discovery cove yeah i didn't get to that part yeah which we're uh so i'm hoping that this in liquid tastes good yeah probably it uh otherwise i'm gonna have to go make slushies uh, yeah grab some ice and everything and that's uh it's very aromatic very aromatic it very much smells like a pina colada shit yeah, yeah smells like uh like the pineapple you can smell it uh, I feel like the flavor isn't as powerful as the scent is, but... The aftertaste, though. Yeah, there is a bit of after, aftertaste, aftertaste to it. Aftertaste tastes just like pina colada. It's got that cool cloudy look, which I think is neat. You know, I have pina colada mix. We could just, like, pour a little bit in and, like, and try with it. That, that is possible. Um, I know a lot of sodas had... Um, brominated vegetable oil as the as the thing that uh, would make it cloudy that would give it that kind of opaque color now i almost want to say that there was uh, some sort of uh, hubbub about that one of those like 
food babe bullcrap things where like, oh, there's a chemical I can't pronounce, so we need to have it removed from stuff. So it may not be a thing that uh, they do anymore, but but still, that's uh, that's good. I would I would say that's good. I would drink oh, that that's again. Good. I I would drink it again. Um, it does have a bit of a sparkly um, taste to it, and I don't know quite how to ex- describe it. No, no, no. Before you, I'm gonna just taste a little bit. I want to compare. No, uh, okay, you can I compare. I want to compare. Can I, I have one of your glasses? It could be mine. Are you just drinking the the pina colada mix straight? I'm just gonna drink like the tiniest bit. Uh, I thought you said you were gonna add that to the soda. I mean, that's what you do when you're. Adding that to like ice when you have a virgin pina colada, it's just this. Weird. <laughs> you and I both had the same thought on that, but we can't say that here. I mean, a lot more taste because it's concentrated. Not bad. Okay, I'll take no. <laughs> take your word for it. But don't you appreciate that I went the extra mile? Oh, I gotta empty my glass so I get. Well, you're you're not gonna put this in there because you ain't gonna be able to taste this. So I guess we gotta use a, a glass in in the bottle now because someone was drinking pina colada mix straight out of the bottle. Listen, I had to do it for science, okay? Sure. <laughs> uh, so our uh, our friend Jessica gave uh, gave us some bottles of some different flavored soda uh, a little while back. Um, partially because we enjoy it and partially kind of for the purposes of the show. So I grabbed the, the each of the four bottles is Dry Sparkling. where That's the brand. We're only doing one of them today. This is Cucumber. This is a very clear... Yeah, yeah. Smells faintly like cucumber. If you remember if you back... you say so. If, uh, yeah, if you remember back to episode three, the very first uh, soda that... I tried for the uh, Sebring Soda Festival was a cucumber soda, so we'll see if this uh, compares. That's <laughs> yeah, cucumber soda. That's pretty much, pretty much exactly like what I remember from the other one. Uh, I think this one's more clear. Uh, to me, it tastes a little bit more like, uh, uh. like a flavored tonic water. Like, there's definitely the flavor of cucumber there. Can you taste it? Oh, yeah. It's, like, the <laughs> primary taste. I'm just trying to figure out, like, if it's a soda or sparkling water. It says it's dry sparkling, but it does say naturally flavored soda. Wow. That's, Ooh, you know, if you, if you ever wanted to drink just a bitter cucumber. <laughs> uh, okay. Going back to Fanta. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I, I I enjoyed the Fanta, but it wasn't like my favorite thing in the world. It's a lot better after you've after you've had bitter cucumber in your mouth. Um, way better. All right, cool. Now, on to the business at hand. So, Picard. It it came out. That was a it thing. Was good. Yes, it, 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 it was we had, good. We had like a little premiere party we did we uh we got some of as much as we could tell kind of our our trekkiest friends um yeah. and oftentimes people that we don't get a chance to hang out with as much as we'd like and we we brought them all over we uh we had some food we had some drink we made some romulan, romulan ale. ale yes so that came from we asked if there was any particular like food or beverage that people wanted and someone on facebook all caps slammed their fist down and said i i demand romulan, romulan ale, ale which they would have been fine if we didn't, but at the same time, well, hell, the gauntlet's been thrown down. i got to figure it out. And there's a ton of recipes for Romulan ale because, you know, fictional drink. Uh, and a lot of them ha- require egg whites. Eh, yeah. I'm glad we didn't do that. Uh, yeah, eh. yeah. It's like, no. Even though I don't drink and I'm going to be making the alcoholic version. Though I, I, will, I will throw out that there are drinks that require that. Yeah. There yeah. are just other drinks out there that's not just an unusual what the hell thing yeah so uh you know i'm gonna look back and i'm gonna see if i can find the recipe that we used for that not only that but also uh i made my own recipe of kind of a non-alcoholic romulan ale which i also enjoyed very much 
Uh, if I can find those recipes, I'm actually going to put that uh, on the episode page on richdoesathing.com. So check there, and maybe you can uh, enjoy some of your own Romulan ale also. Delicious and very strong. Very deceptive. I, I mean, as drink slow. Yes, you know, uh, it is supposed to be potent stuff. Uh, just ask Worf. Yeah, so, but yeah, it was good, and it was uh, it was a blast. We got to see the first episode, and you know, everybody you know gasped and squeed and and all the the great things. So yeah. it was it was cool. It was great. We all started theorizing together and everything. Oh, we we sure did. So let's do things we like and things we didn't like. Yeah, we got to see. Jean-Luc Picard again. How was that? Yes. Oh, it was great. And I think, and uh, one of our friends and, and I uh, agreed, like, the moment we knew, it's like, my cap, oh, captain, my captain moment was during the interview part when he, when she says, Romulan lives. And he says, no, lives. And it's like, yes, yes, it's Captain Picard. Mm. Yes, uh, I would say humanitarian, but I guess that'd be like humanoiditarian, because I mean Romulans aren't humans, but at the or same just time, just moral. Uh, yeah, I, there's that. <laughs> Absolutely ethical. So he was great. He's, uh, you know, the timelessly never aging uh, Patrick Stewart has aged. You know, it's been what thirty years? Oh, I can't remember. It's been it's been a few decades. So I mean. Because he's a human being. He they act- timed uh, Data's death as two decades ago. So that'd be okay. 10 years. 20 years. So yeah, that 20, was so. 20, so 20 years since the last movie. So yeah, he's still, in any case, he is, he's aged a, a bunch. Um, and he, I feel like he's acting fairly frail. And I don't know if that's because he genuinely is a bit more frail or if he's acting it that way when certain kind of action scene type of stuff happens, maybe he's able to do a little bit more. I don't know. But uh, he wasn't afraid to back down from a fight in some, some of those scenes. I mean, but, you know, there was a, definitely an acknowledgement of, like, he is aged. Yep. And um, especially when... Uh, they were running away from the Romulan squad. Uh, him and Dodge. Dodge, yes, thank you. H- him and Dodge were running away, and um, and he was like, "I gotta stop for a minute." And she's like, "No, come on!" And I, I literally, I yelled out, "Be careful with him! <laughs> Be gentle!" Yes. <laughs> So, yeah, he's definitely uh, yeah, changed and aged a little bit. You see him relaxing in his uh, his little house uh, with his vineyard and everything. It was it was cool. I still would have been happy if that was all yeah. what it was. Yeah, if you just, you know, sit at home and play backgammon yeah, and, and hang out with uh, his dog, number one, uh, that would have been cool and cute and adorable. You had stuff to say about his dog. Oh, uh, well, yeah, it was, it was, I mean, we were excited that he had a dog. You know, you'd see it on the posters and stuff, and we were kind of hoping he was going to be uh, more of a part of the show, which apparently they had the idea that they kind of did want to um, make him a bigger part of the show and to even bring him onto the ship, uh, kind of almost like a Porthos, where he was, you know, just the dog that hung out with them. But um, I guess it was just going to be too stressful on the dog uh, for the shooting and everything, so they decided not to. But it was still cool to see. Um, I actually saw some people get mad online because the the dog's ears were cropped um which is a kind of an unfortunate you know cruel practice but um sir patrick stewart is a big proponent of rescuing dogs yes. um and especially so pits. yeah especially uh, pit bulls and apparently that was actually a rescue dog uh where they had cropped his ears you know before the rescue so it was just yeah it just how it was it's not stance. yeah I mean, you can't help how the dog comes to you after it's been rescued. Yep. Um, so the fact that they used a rescue dog for that's really cool. And it was, you know, even the tiniest little scenes with them were yeah. really cute and I, adorable. I like how you haters tried, but, you know, back off. <laughs> you got, you got well, no traction I, here. I, I can kind of understand the <laughs> initial knee jerk, but once you realize that, like, oh, no, it's because of good things. Like, oh, okay, yeah. fine, cool. We also got to see in that first episode Data. 
Data yeah. came back, and you know he was somebody. He was gone, uh, and we got super excited seeing him in the trailers. Yeah. There's so many people that you see pop up in the trailers, um, and I guess I got the impression that he was going to be a stronger character that was throughout the uh, the series, and then to find out within the first episode that hey, all the footage that you see in the trailer. They pop that all in the first episode, and and then you're not sure if you're ever going to see him again because the whole series is about kind of you know searching for data. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's other, there's more moral implications, but from a fan's point of view, you just like we, we're going to get data back. We need to get data back. Um, and so it was disappointing to not see more of him throughout the series, but it was still really awesome to see him. Yes. Um, and it's nice that they can explain a bit of his physical changes, uh, not only from the fact that he's kind of living in a memory or, or a dream of uh, Jean-Luc, so uh, they, they do a decent job of kind of explaining that, but at the same time letting you see him. Mm-hmm. Um, in the first little scene with him, uh, Jean-Luc talks about Data slightly dilating one of his eyes while playing poker, um, which I thought was cute. And then Jesse pointed out that if you he look, does that, it. yeah, they he actually, actually does it. did that in the uh, the CG to to make that little extra bit of realism. I got I got to complain for a minute, and this isn't just held to this series it's even before this they started using the bright yellow contacts for data and i'm like what happened to the the slightly yellow gold contacts that they had and then they used that for all the other androids too and it's like come on they, they got to be able to order that out there somewhere anyway yeah, they could but do you think uh, it was a matter of recognizability where they thought that um, it should be brighter and maybe perhaps that they wanted it to be brighter before but they didn't have the technology to make them quite that color back in the day it's always been described anytime they talk about data that about gold eyes not yellow hmm. gold eyes okay fair <laughs> I'd be curious as to uh, what conversations they would have had in the writers room for any of that uh, I think an, another thing that we were kind of thinking about or wondering about th- through the whole series also is uh, how believable are these characters going to be from uh, from Picard going away and coming back and really everybody else, which I think generally, uh, I think it went fairly well. Yeah. I really did believe Seven of Nine's character for sure. Loved Seven of Nine. She was fantastic. There it is. Yeah, absolutely. She very much has uh, embraced a lot more of her humanity. Um, she's She really strikes me as completely human now. I mean, she still has uh, a lot of the, the Borg implants, but that's just because you can't really safely uh, remove it without uh, uh, doing all sorts of you know horrible damage. Um, and yeah, it was fantastic seeing her. She had a lot of depth to her. I was very upset about Icheb. Rich doesn't remember Icheb, and Icheb was one of the Borg children that they saved off an abandoned vessel. And um, I was very upset that, but I was so glad to see that Icheb gone on to be and uh, Starfleet officer. I just, I hate that that ended that way. And I felt heartbroken with her. It's like, no. Oh, okay. That's from the uh, the, the initial scene with her. And Okay, all right. Yeah, I don't even think we discussed that in the moment. So, yeah, I didn't even realize that thing. Oh, man. Yeah, okay. So that that brings a lot more of the, the tension to it and with her yeah. character and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, I can absolutely see that. And to see her her passion with everything, and at the same time her imperfections, uh, her desire for revenge being so strong that she would uh, sometimes go to lengths that maybe she might not be as proud of in retrospect. Um, And even to, I mean, the very end when she, it seems like she has a girlfriend. I 
feelings about this. Not about her being uh, uh, bisexual. Uh, I have strong feelings about who she picked. Because <laughs> if, if we're going to talk about characters we don't like... Didn't like Rafi? There were times I liked Rafi. There were times I didn't like Rafi. A good point that I've heard people talk about is that this is supposed to have been a utopian society. And maybe it's gone a little downhill since then. But in theory, in this utopian society, everyone's being taken care of. Um, you know, they don't have much use for currency anymore. And, you know, everybody's doing their, their own thing to try to be as best they can. Whereas, um, very clearly, uh, Jean-Luc was living a good life out in his vineyard. And Rafi was not. She was she was poor. I think there is still some sort of, like, not currency, but some sort of, like, give and take that happens in that society. It's not ever, ever been explained. But I think she chose to be in isolation because she had pretty much just was so obsessed with the conspiracy and nobody else believed her about it. Yeah, certainly could be. Uh, that's true. I mean, everyone has their, their issues that they end up trying to uh, to work through. You know, Rafi has her family stuff that she tries to kind of reconnect with. Now she goes to go back to her son and be like, I told you! <laughs> um, yeah, all that. And uh, we get to see uh, Will Riker and uh, Deanna Troy again. I really liked, even though they were there in such a short time, I really like that we did get a good filler for where their life is at, at that point. And, and that they had had children, they had lost a child, they were experiencing loss. Yeah. And also healing from that. And then how that tied into the android ban and why they lost their, their son yeah, because true. of that. Deanna automatically knowing that there was something wrong with Picard. Yeah, yeah, because they uh, they lean into that pretty early into everything. Is that you know Picard has a uh, a terminal illness that is going to strike at some point, which is kind of weird and confusing when you're starting off the very beginning of a brand new series that you know has already been greenlit for a second yeah. season. Yeah, like it had already been like confirmed for second season. I'm like. But they're really leaning hard into this, like, he's going to die thing. So uh, the the one theory that I had was, like, are they going to just continue on without him and then just call it Picard? And, and it was going to be, like, a Picard legacy or something or find a son or something like that? I don't know. I wasn't sure where they were going to go with that. but but Yeah, but it still it felt like a really good strong connection with uh that episode with uh, will and diana i really liked that point where they're all at the dinner table and i forget how the scene how it goes but you know they're trying to figure out their options so and and i think it's Riker that suggests okay let's have a meeting like we used to let's figure this out like we used to like we were just in the conference room on the enterprise and in it like the way they acted it was just like they were just sitting there it's just different environment and i'm like oh it was so good it was yeah. so good yeah they're at the long dinner table it really was kind of like being in uh uh yeah they're not the ready room but the the, the conference room yeah and, the uh, conference room and yeah it, so that was cool and you know it's say like everyone's aged and matured and uh but at the same time, they also have the nice little personal touches from the uh, the conversations that uh, Picard has with them, the uh, the making of pizza and and all the other really uh, human touches that I think they try to impress while um, uh, while the other android was there. Um, uh, you yeah, so she. So, so she, she yes, while well, so she was there. Which was important to the story and everything, and I'm so it was nice to see all that uh, woven together. Um, uh, another nostalgic character that we got to see that was not in the uh, trailers that was kind of a surprise for us was to see Hugh. I mean, I knew from articles, but yeah, seeing Hugh was cool. Oh yeah, I did. I did not know Hugh was going to be there. So 
that was really cool and exciting. It's something that if you didn't know him, if you weren't familiar with Star Trek Next Generation, it wouldn't have made a huge difference to you. But yeah, it was good to see. Uh, it was it was good to see Hugh, and that was uh, that that was cool. Uh, it was really good to see Hugh. I liked that. You know, I, I really wish they had kind of gone into a bit more of how Hugh came to be at that point in time. Because it, last we saw him, he was still Borg. He had, um, I forget how the episode goes where Borg kind of like goes and gets this Borg posse with him. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and and but Hugh kind of is not involved involved sort of I don't know but um, he still had like he's very much still Borg and now we've seen him without any of his any of his implants or anything like that so well, I think he still had some implant stuff but like he has hair he didn't have the like the headpiece he didn't yeah. have tubes. He had two eyes. He had two eyes. Yeah. And so I think some scarring. Yeah. But uh, given what he was working on, that was kind of part of the deal. So it, it was good to see him. It was good to see him and Picard have an embrace. That would be one, if I, if I may, one of the things I would bring up that I was kind of like, eh, about Picard's uh, character in this series is that Yes, Picard was a very compassionate person, but he usually didn't show it a whole lot in the other series. I didn't think so. Oh, in the previous series? Yeah. Uh, he was always professional. Well, I mean, he was in charge of an entire ship full of people. You know, he was he was on duty. I, I, you know, I still feel like he was the same person. He just maybe didn't get a chance to show it as much. Whereas this, he's he's got a ship full of people that are helping him, but he's not in charge of them. Yeah, I just, I don't know, sometimes when he was real huggy or stuff like that, I'm like, mm, mm. <laughs> uh, I felt like that was, that was fine with me. Uh, that worked well. Uh, and also, they never did explain how he's suddenly okay with kids. <laughs> how he was suddenly okay with interacting with kids when he had been so awkward around children the entire TNG series. And it's like, what what happened? Well, where did this character change come from? Why? What's what's compelled it? Uh, I had the theory of, of it was because he lost Data. And Data m might have felt like a son to him, in a way. Yeah, maybe. Don't know. Don't really have much thoughts on that. Hmm. Yeah. Um, it's also kind of cool to think of the nostalgic ca uh, characters that we are probably going to see in the future. Uh, we've seen that uh, Sir Patrick Stewart went on The View and asked Whoopi Goldberg if she would uh, come back for season two as Guinan, which she uh, she said that she would. Also noted that uh, LeVar Burton was on set a fair amount of times for Picard, even though he didn't actually show up in the series. But who knows, maybe Jodie LaForge might be coming back. Oh, I would love for Jodie to come back. <clears throat> I was surprised that Jodie didn't come back for this one. As much as Data was involved with this, felt like Jordy's expertise was needed. True. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, there's there's lots of interesting things that uh, might be coming for the future for that. So that's um, cool. I don't think. Do you know that Worf is coming back? He's been. It's been confirmed. Uh, confirmed? No, I hadn't heard about Worf. Worf is coming. <clears throat> cool. Yes, we're gonna have some Klingons. We need some Klingon action up in this. Beat. We're gonna have an old, <laughs> an, an old Klingon. Yes. Yeah. Like, the way Klingons are supposed to be with hair. <laughs> that's true. Well, yeah, I mean, of course, Discovery is really, really uh, early, so that's even before yeah. the TNG Klingons. I mean, I have to say, like, during the second season, they did start gray growing their hair back, and they didn't have hair because they shaved it off for religious reasons. But um, they weren't really talking like this now with the mouth fur. Of so much dental wear. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, also, did <clears throat> notice that uh, Picard versus a lot of the older Trek, there were a lot more action scenes. There was a lot of uh, 
yeah. you know, uh, in some cases, you know, Michael Bay esque, uh, crazy, ridiculous, seen you know, lots of blasting and flying, and which was cool. I didn't, yeah, I didn't think that was a, a detractant. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I, I, I know people had some grief with that, and to a degree, I did too. But I also recognize that our media has evolved like the slow sci-fi stuff isn't as entertaining to audiences anymore and you know you just have to kind of go with the trends of the time and put some more action in there but. I, I just thought it was fun and entertaining you know <clears throat> the cg and everything's gotten easier and yes. I, I don't know about uh, less expensive or anything but i think they had the capacity to do more and so um, yeah, to, to throw some action in there is pretty cool. I mean, there were some pretty awesome action sequences with Seven and Nine. Yes. Yeah, I mean, she was blasting away and all sorts of great stuff. She was um, badass. She there... was just a, a ruthless killer, and I'm, I was, <laughs> I was here for it. Speaking of which, I'll let you talk about our favorite scene. Uh, uh, well, we certainly can. I, I was going to say, for action stuff, there was also... Um, the I don't remember his name. The kind of elvish-looking guy with a sword. See, we had a hard time remembering names. That was one thing too. It's like we kept like looking at each other, like what's what's his name? I can't remember his name. What, what's that person's name? It, 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 it was the names weren't as catchy as I thought they should have been. Yeah. Uh, like in it, like I don't know writers just. For any of the future characters you create, make make it a like a easy name to remember for it. Yeah, but it'll come to me eventually. His name. Yeah, but yeah, he uh, he did all sorts of uh, yeah crazy, you know, running around and sword stuff and messing people up and all sorts of stuff. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah, there's other cool action stuff. Cutting but, somebody's head in half. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, there's plenty of times in which he just someone was a hazard and then they weren't which people also had grief with um this series being more gory and yes and no if you go back to some of the tng you can pick out and clip out some scenes that were pretty like and also some of the movies as well so yeah, I think it's uh, an evolution of the audience as much as uh, anything as well. It didn't make me, like, want to wretch. It didn't make me, like, uncomfortable, so... Yeah. But, yes, uh, you know, the scene she was talking about is... Um, so, they are in this, uh, the artifact, the Borg Cube, which um, they're they're trying to take back from, you know, the nasty bad guys. And so, uh, so they are kind of locked away in the Queen's room, and uh, 709 decides that... Probably one of the best ways to try to fight back um, would be to kind of connect herself to that Borg cube and become like a little miniature Borg queen of sorts uh, so that she can jolt the Borg to life and, and have them kind of under her yes. control a bit to try to fight um, fight everybody off. Which And when that happened... Yeah, she, oh. she was very hesitant to do it uh, because as she said, you know... It, once it gets connected to you and everything, it's not necessarily a thing that you want to disconnect. You may really just not want to stop. And she also had the moral, moral implications of, you know, they don't get to decide that for themselves. Yep, true. Uh, you know, that she would be taking their individuality, which now that she's been dissociated from the Borg for so long she realizes the value of that yeah and then yeah uh, once she connects to it and it's this fantastic visual of a scene where yeah these cables come out they plug into her like she's going into the matrix and you know her eyes go black and she gets the voice and it is we, bad ass yeah, we are Borg uh, and yeah. I'm like ah uh, yes ah uh, yes and it was gonna like she was gonna go down yes. I'm like I'm here for it yes it is like oh. the, the craziest you know the biggest most dangerous you know enemy known to Star Trek uh, turning on the bad guys it's like it's like taking control of the Death Star and then you know turning it around and blasting uh, I don't know some star destroyers or something like that it's 
it's crazy. And so, yeah, that happens. And then all the Borg kind of come to life and start coming out of their alcoves. And you are ready to see the biggest, longest, craziest action yes. scene of just fighting and assimilating some, the, some the Romulans Tal Shiar. versus Borg. Yeah. I've always wanted to see Romulan versus Borg. Yeah, that'd be and, crazy. And oh they, man, that was so cool. And they give However, you none of it. Yes. Um, unfortunately, I mean, everybody comes to life, and you are you're ready, and they decide, you know what? No, and, and the. Uh, the they just um, antagonist just opens up the side of the cube and sucks all the Borg out into space so they can do nothing, which uh, sucks. I mean, you get like a couple of Borg walking around, but uh, not enough yeah. to actually be a threat. I just I feel like the writers and 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 the effects artists and everything they could have done at least a couple. Yeah, uh, just a couple just Borg. A little bit. Just fighting some people, some some Romulans, and and they don't have to go full simulation. Just do some nanom probes and see the black veins and like, blah, 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 and yeah. then there you go. Yeah, absolutely. That <laughs> would have been awesome. Unfortunately, we uh, were deprived. I hope that there is Borg in season two. I hope that there is like a little side story of like a Borg that got out there. I know. I just. I want Borg. Starts, I want Borg. And start his own podcast. <laughs> I just. I want Borg. I want more Borg for next season. That's what I hope. So yes, and then once everything kind of wraps up, um, yeah, there's a there's a bunch. That last episode is. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not a huge fan of the last episode because they build everything up. There's so many of these different loose ends that have to be tied. And they've shown us with Discovery that yeah. they can tie up loose ends and uh, make Very it quickly. interesting and uh, fulfilling. And there's a lot of things that I don't feel were utilized either well or at all. Um, we talk about the, uh, the essentially the, the sky gets torn open mm-hmm. and there's these giant evil space worms that, you know, are going to destroy you know, uh, organic life everywhere. Android worms. Thank you. Uh, you, the what? Because it was like this, like a superior form of androids coming to help them. Right, like I said, they're going to they're yeah. going to destroy all of organic life. Yeah, yeah, um, everywhere, and uh, they 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 peek their little heads in for a second, and then meh, and it's I don't know, like I felt like if you were going to use them, you could have used them a little bit more, and then just have that little bit be beaten back rather than just. Peekaboo, just kidding. That thing that we were building up to this whole time is kind of nothing. I mean, they kind of did the same thing in Avengers, but stuff did actually come through yeah. in that one. Yeah, that that would have been enough, I think, just that you know, little bit. the Starfleet showing up, all those ships showing up. Right, yeah, that would be like... They could have taken on some, like, worm aliens. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe. I, we don't know what powers the uh those those aliens had we don't know what they could have done we didn't know their mechanism for anything because we didn't learn any of it because they didn't get used at all yeah um i also i loved that moment of seeing will Riker in uniform that was a good that was a good moment yes that was yeah because when when we left them we figured that was their their cameo uh, episode and that was it we weren't going to see them again so it was a, a pleasant surprise to see him Back and being just as confident as uh, and uh, talking assertive, down those, yeah. Right, talking down those Romulans and and also doing the 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 Riker. The, the, yeah, the trouble is he both of his legs were on the ground. He didn't yeah, have like one true. leg up in the air. Well, he's a captain now. He's got to be a little bit more professional. But he still he still did the like. I don't know the way he sits in a chair. He kind of like has to brace himself in chairs. <laughs> like all the time and he was still bracing himself in that chair <laughs> I, I wonder how cognizant he and the director were of the uh the will Riker tropes with the uh the leg on a chair and sitting in chairs weird well he he's one of the directors so he uh, probably was very cognizant of it <laughs> yeah, no, so I'm, now i'm curious to uh go back and re-watch it and see if at any point in time he ever uh, sits in something inappropriately um Dude, I didn't even take note on, like, when we were at Will Riker's house, whether he did raise his leg on yeah. anything or not. we got to go back and look. Yes, we do. 
Um, so there's that. Also, you know, the big build of you know, Jean-Luc Picard being terminally ill and he's going to die. And uh, well, even before that, sorry, I have to cut you off. Apologize. But even before that, like him finally taking the captain's chair. That was a big moment. Yeah. Even though he had no idea how to pilot the ship, he figured it out. He he got his way. He got him. He got himself up there, and, and he was he was doing a badass job. And they used the Picard maneuver, which was so cool. I loved that reference. I thought that that was cool. He's like the Picard you could do the Picard maneuver, and she's like, wait, there is actually a Picard maneuver. Can we use that? And she's like, no, we can't. And she's like, yeah, we can. We have this magical, oh, yeah, the magical tool. The magical tool that can do anything. That was a little weird. That was a little yeah. bit of a, like, a too easy out. Like, oop, magical tool. Yeah, we can fix it. Which I was thinking they had, hey, magical tool that fix anything. Hey, let's use it on your head. Yeah, and that's fix your what head. I, I thought that was going to be how it went. I thought it was going to be like, he was going to be dying. And that's where we thought. Like, yeah. he was dying on the ship, and she was going to be like, I, I need to save you. And the tool was going to be like this magical, like, scanner, like, yes. little thing to save him. Uh, two or three episodes before the end, they mentioned they have this empty robot body that you can put a person or a thing or whatever into. Yeah. Well, we're looking for data. We're waiting for data. So once we get data's, you know, little synapse... Then they can extrapolate. They can put them back in the body, and ta-da, we have data. And now we have magic wand of fixing things. We can magic wand Picard's head, make him normal again. (laughs) And honestly, that would have been fine, because uh, if the the golem, if the empty robot body looks a little bit different than the original data, ta-da, you've explained away his aging. And that's fine. That's wonderful. Everybody would believe it. Everybody would love it. Uh, like, but, Data could say, like, something like, I experienced aging while I was in this limbo or, that he was in. Or, or just, blah, blah, blah. just the, the body is different, just made slightly different. Yeah. Or, yeah, I suppose... Different construction. If they were able to talk to him beforehand, which I don't think they could, but if they did, wanting to be human, I could see him saying, hey, could you make me a little older? And be like, sure, bruh, no problem. <laughs> but Like, uh, I would like to experience aging, please. And then they'd be like, cool, bro. Yeah. Yeah, we'll make that happen for you. Done. Yeah. I and I I I was with you on that where I thought they were gonna go, but there was the slight suspicion in the back of my head, I'm like I'm gonna put Picard in that. And I was like, No, they're not gonna do that. Yeah. That, I did yeah. look at you and like, they're gonna make Picard an Android and you were like, No. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just like like they could, but it just seems like a stupid easy out that they wouldn't actually take. And uh, and they did. Yeah, they did. Picard's dying, and we're like, okay, get out the little magic wand to fix him. And they're like, and he's dead. All right, we're gonna. We're I gonna bawled t- <clears throat> my eyes out, and I was angry. You were there for that. I was yeah. very angry. Well, she she thought he was dead for good, and I knew that we had another season and another good 10, 15 minutes left in the episode. So I'm like, eh, I don't think he. I, until this episode's over, I don't actually believe that well, he's they, dead. They prolonged the death oh, so sure much did. that I was like, they did it. They actually are going to do it. They're actually going to kill my childhood hero. Yeah, the, the namesake. <laughs> right in front of me. And I was pissed. I was so angry <laughs> and sad and heartbroken. And, and it was right around... I know you don't want me to mention it, but it was right around when, you know, things here in reality weren't so happy, happy joy times. So I was like, life sucks! (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Anyway. Yeah, so, and they did. They they took a page out of Portal 2 and they took him, uh, his consciousness and everything, and stuck him in a robot body. And, uh, which screws up all sorts of stuff. I mean, there's all sorts of wrinkles that get put in there. Um, well, and like they, they, what? Like how so? Well, I'm, I'm telling you. Oh, okay. Um, and they try to iron out some of those wrinkles. They're like, oh, well, now you can live forever. Like, oh, no, I'm not going to live forever. I'm going to die at some point. Oh, then it's just going to be a sudden, no, it's almost going to be like I age, like a normal human. Like, ye- that's, 
stupid way to fix that. You didn't need, yeah. And like, oh, and you're, so you're probably going to have like super strength and superpowers. Nope. I got programmed to be exactly like a normal human. So, I mean, sure, this, I'm sure, opens up a tiny little something they can exploit in season two, and I'm sure they can tweak something and suddenly make them super strong or whatever, but they I, didn't I need feeling, to do that. I have a feeling in season two they're just going to never mention it. Which, it'd be even dumber. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, like... I was very conflicted because I was like, "Well, Picard is still dead," and you were like, "No, he's alive. He's 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 his, yeah, consciousness, his consciousness is alive." Is, yeah. I'm like, "But," and that's where it comes down to like a whole, whole philosophical like debate of like what is life, and I, and I'm like, I just don't know how to feel about it still. Yeah, I mean, anytime you get into that discussion, at that point, anybody who's ever used a transporter is dead. Yeah, there is that theory of like every time someone uses a transporter, you're you're killing you're the killing actual that you person and reassem- uh, and assembling re- a new person in the yeah. other location because it's so fast it can't even be the same atom. So it's different atoms. It's a different per. It's to- so I mean, if you're if you're gonna spl- go down to split that hair, then I mean, everybody in Star Trek is dead. Everybody. Yeah, yeah it, it really touched on for a brief moment some some very like conflicting like what is life moments. Um, if anybody out there has ever played the game Soma, which you should play at some point, um, it that game very much touches on what is uh, what is consciousness, what is life, what is humanity. So it was like. Yeah, and I also felt like it defeated the purpose of, like, what Picard taught Data his entire life. Of yeah. What is humanity? Humanity is to live and then to eventually die. I mean, that's just part of it. Yeah, it was just, uh, I didn't feel like it was, any of that was well handled. But, uh, so it didn't seem like as satisfying of an end for any of that stuff, and and you know they dangle the the carrot of all right you're gonna see this uh, this important character die. Uh, just kidding. Uh, no, he didn't, and not really because we learned anything or achieved anything. It's just you know a spare body we had laying around that we just shoved his soul into. So and then as soon as they finished with that, then you know you get you finally get that moment we were waiting for all season where he's talking with Data, and it's actually Data. And it's uh, it's great. You get the satisfaction of seeing him again. He's back. A world of possibilities has opened up. He has his conversation, and then Data wants to die. Yeah, which you know that one wasn't as emotional for me. I, I, I well, it was more emotional for me because I didn't believe the the first death because I was right. <laughs> <laughs> but this one I knew was actually him dying, and that uh, that sucked. Especially because, you know, if we had gotten more data throughout this series, if we got to experience him, to reconnect with him, to have more awesome data moments, it would have sucked, but it would have been kind of okay to lose him at the end. So to spend the entire season searching for him... And then at the very end, you get the thing that you want, and then that thing that you want is immediately killed. Sucked. Yeah. I mean, I had already been through the emotions before when, after... The Lego movie. Huh? The Lego movie. No, no. The last Star Trek movie. Oh, the water boy. No, baby. Be helpful. Was it insurrection? <laughs> you know, I have to cut that. So after the last Star Trek movie, uh, you know, Data sacrifices his life for his captain. And it was very sudden, though. It was like, you know, we did not get a chance to say goodbye. And I was grateful for the opportunity to say goodbye to Data. And, and it was a very nice kind of closure for me yeah better better than nemesis was you know yeah so yeah it was and uh you know they they 
gave him the proper time for the actual, you know, death and goodbye, and gave the appropriate time that was needed for that. But still, I don't I, know, still sucks. I have to say too, though, during that whole scene, the way he talked and his mannerisms all were so spot on data, and it was so good. He's like, I just, I feel like I need to be a part of the human experience. But you, you, Picard, you go on and you skip that part. <laughs> well, no, because he, he knows he's going to get there anyway. And actually, I think that might have been part of the desire for, uh, well, actually, no, the, the true desire for uh, Picard getting programmed to die is because, well, Sir Patrick Stewart's not going to live forever. Um, yeah. And that's the, you know, probably the real reason. But uh, as far as the story is concerned, you know, I, that's probably part of why his character would say, hey, I want to have a normal rest of my life for a lifespan, um, is because Data taught me something about humanity. Yeah. You know, though, there was that also a little bit confusing part at the end. It's like when they're shutting down that little part of Data and, and give, fulfilling that wish. And, and it's a slow shutdown, and Data's laying on the couch, and he's actually aging. Picard's there, and he's holding his hand. And I feel like that's, to me, that read as that's Picard's actual soul dying with Data. Uh, so no. this other guy's a fake. <laughs> no, I, I read it as, I mean, because everything in that world is uh, Data's construction. It's his... Everything from the uh, the clothes he's wearing, the room that he's in, everything is something that uh, uh, it's a universe that Data has made to live in, to uh, to operate in, uh, and everything. And uh, when he was finally passing, um, the person that he wanted to be there with him was Picard, and so it's what he wanted to be there. So it's who was there. Where was Jordy though? Jordy was his best friend. And Spot. Where was Spot? Uh, well, they. I mean, they had Spot. They did. They had Spot two. two. Yeah. Spot two. <laughs> I did like that. I'm like, oh, yeah. it's Spot two. Yeah. There's a lot of really good uh, little little throwbacks and little Easter eggs that were good. Yeah. I do like the possibilities of there being a seven nine only show. Spinoff. Yeah, spinoff. They've also talked about a Janeway spinoff, so maybe they might be doing a combo. I don't know. They've talked about a billion different spinoffs, and it's, you know, you don't know how many different, how far each of these are going to get, because there's more ideas than there is uh, a space to make it all happen, no pun intended. Um, so, I mean, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. There's Discovery spinoffs that I've heard rumor for for a couple of years, and uh, I'm not sure I've really heard anything about that. I'm actually happening for Discovery yet. though Discovery's gonna be great mm. uh, you know I wouldn't trade the experience at all I'm really glad for the entire series I'm glad for where it will be going I'm interested I'm still hooked and still ready to follow it uh, any hopes that you have for season two? Oh man um you know, given what we've seen from the first season, I hope they continue with having nostalgic characters in there and making them being uh, a fair part of everything. But at the same time, I'm completely fine with them having newer characters. Um, they've explored a lot of stuff with Atal Shiar, was the, the primary focus of uh, this series. The primary focus for the last series for Discovery really was the Vulcans and the Klingons, uh, which maybe that's why they went in the, the, the Romulan... Stuff. But they're also completely different timelines. Oh, no, yeah, they went with the Romulans because the Romulans have lost their home world. Also very true. Uh, which, I mean, yeah, I mean, it could be a combination of any of those things. Yeah, but... it was like a significant change that they were going to have to address, and so they just decided to make it part of like the overall plot in yeah. my opinion i mean they could still pick one of the uh primary races that they interact with and go with that i mean uh, they could have the andorians they could uh they could uh, i'm done with andorians or, to be honest with you you know who we haven't heard from in a while the cardassians 
Prue. The Cardassians, the Ferengi. Yes, we gotta have a Ferengi <laughs> moment. We at least have to have a Ferengi moment. Oh, I loved that there was a, mo- a reference to Ma, and there was a reference to Quark on that casino-like uh, planet. There was two references oh. to them. There was like signs for like Quarks. There was a sign for Quarks, oh, and yeah. there was a sign for Ma. Mott was the guy that cut hair on uh, gotcha. the Enterprise. Oh, that's cool. So. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I would uh, going into some, some new uh, stuff with some new races and everything, um, having some other weave-ins. Um, yeah, if we had someone bounce in from, well, I mean, we've had Voyager, but still, I mean, if Janeway uh, popped in for an episode or something, that would be cool. Can you imagine if Cisco? Uh, had like a pop in or something. Well, well, it, they would have to really like go into like a lot for Cisco because Cisco's out, you know, in a different plane right now. He, oh, is he we, not? No. That's how that ends. He goes. Well, he goes to be with the prophets to I, learn a bunch of different stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's part human, part prophet. But we got Hugh. I think if Hugh can, <gasps> if, oh, yeah, if, Hugh. if Hugh can have the stuff that happened to him and come back. They could figure out a way to bring Cisco in for something because they have no problems getting ridiculous with things. So well, I really hope for next season, Q. Because I thought oh, that's what yeah. you said. I hope that they have a Q moment. Yeah. Uh, at least one Q episode. Come on. Um, uh, I hope that Picard comes out of retirement. This was another thing I was kind of let down on. I want to see. Whatever new enterprise is in, you know, oh, service. Yeah. I want to see that enterprise. I want to see what's going on with it. I could see them doing a slow burn on like on that, like they did with Discovery and Spock, where they're like, and you get to see Spock, and then three episodes later, they're like, at some point, you're gonna see Spock, and then like ten more episodes after that, they're like, and here he is. Next episode, you'll see him. You're like, God, Dad, just. <laughs> want to see the Spock and then there he is so maybe they'll do that where they'll be like oh yes. and he's gonna go to the Enterprise yes. like oh but we have this other side quest we have to do somewhere and like and don't worry we're halfway into the season we'll be soon be seeing the Enterprise and then it'll be like the last episode they're like here it is tune in for season three I hope that they have uh, Jordy come on I yes. really do like Absolutely. that would be one of my favorite characters to come back I would like to know what the status between Beverly and John Luke is mm-hmm. because they had an attraction yeah. and I was shipping that for the entire maybe she series. Li- maybe she lives in the chateau down the street and he just didn't want to talk to her about him running off into space land so yeah there's uh there's a lot of stuff um yeah um, I'm trying to think if there's like any wishes of other things. I definitely want to see Picard back in service. I don't know if I want to see any, any of the other characters. I I liked um, again names are hard. The blonde, the the scientist lady. Yeah, what was her name? Her name was starting to get easier to remember. Now I just can't. Mm. Don't know. She was okay after. I know she did some shitty things, but. You know, oh, that's one thing we didn't talk about is that the android mind. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep, there was uh, there was there was a Vulcan mind meld that an android did, which I you know. Yeah, when it, they did it, that, I it, was it, like, it happened, so it's canon, but I'm still not sure it's canon. Yeah, it's not I, head canon. I really like that they brought Noon, uh, uh, a Nuni and soon character in yes I really like and that. he's still there so brent spiner can still be part yeah. of picard he just won't be data i i would love to see that soon and jordy converse i would love oh, to see that yeah. that would That'd be, be cool. very that would be very cool and they could still construct a data maybe there's still hope i just <laughs> i just saw a theory kind of born right here folks oh yeah they could like they could do it that whole mind meld android thing that made me go mm, I don't know guys I don't know I'm I'm not quite on board with this but you know okay it, there were some pretty extraordinary things on uh, 
Star Trek 2 at times, so I guess I gotta I, I have it sometimes. Um, what else would I love to see? I would love to see... I would love to see either in Discovery or in Season 2 of Picard. I would love to see Dax. Not, you know, an, another reincarnation of oh, Dax. That's right, because they can do that. Yes. Now, we've been seeing Trill in the um, trailers for Discovery, so I believe that is what's going to happen. I hope that is. it's like a thousand years later. Of I forget how far in advance. Anyway, however many years into the future beyond that it is, that that is it, that Dax now. I want, I want that so bad because Dax is my absolute favorite character. I want that so badly. Anyway. Lots of things, lots of possibilities. Oh, Klingon fights. I want that too. Need some Klingon up in this business. <laughs> we gotta have some kaplaz, some hand cutting, fatless, yes. A never ending uh, Star Trek wish list. It won't, it won't ever end. I need to see some warp cores. Jeffrey's tube. Where's the Jeffrey's tube, man? We didn't get into a single Jeffrey's tube in the entire series. Jeffrey you, was nowhere to be found. Yeah, Jeffrey was nowhere to be found. We we need to get in that tube. <laughs> and what's Wesley up to? I don't think I don't think he'll ever come back. I I don't. Maybe he's the one that's going to bring Cisco back. Well, remember he's also supposed. To, well, they messed that up though. He was supposed to be on some sort of like journey on a different plane. I know. But, all, but in the last movie, he's just suddenly there, and also suddenly back in Starfleet. It's like. Well, again, maybe maybe he's the one that brings Cisco back. That would be f very far reach. I would love to see Cisco. You're putting Picard in a robot body, ain't. <laughs> so yeah there's a lot of things there's a lot of things that I would love to see but I think we should wrap this up because I've gone on far too long you've been wanting me to wrap this up for a while you're like shut up shut up shut up shut up you nerd you put a ring on it now you're stuck with me <laughs> you're stuck with the Star Trek uh, yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot of information and a lot to go over. Uh, so thank you for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed this entire episode. Be sure to check us out on the Facebook group for Rich Does a Thing. Check us out at richdoesathing.com on Instagram, on Twitter, on just about any other social media platform you can think of. If you have any questions, email me at rich at richdoesathing.com. And until next time, stay away from liquid cucumber. And, uh... We'll see you on the next mission.